Hey guys, so just a quick little update. We're here uh, tracking and um, we are going to be trialing for our IGP-1 in a few days. So to be honest, I'm not sure if we're ready. There's some issues on the track to resolve. There's some dumbbell issues to resolve and um, there are some send out issues to resolve. So that's a lot of issues for a few days before trial. Um, but we're really pushing. We're, we're training literally every day. We're at this five, six hours a day, um, just going from place to place and training. So we'll see if we can make it happen. Um, you know, he's a young dog. He just turned two. So we might be pushing a little too hard. We're going to find out soon, though. I'll have more on this later. So we're just going to get started tracking. So I'll catch some of that. I sent him the wrong way on purpose. Ah, good. That's the right way. Do little tricks like this. Easy boy. Good. I want to make sure he really knows his job. Good boy. So with IGP, it's a balance. Power and precision. How much power can you get without losing too much precision? And how much precision can you get without losing too much power? And that is the ultimate struggle of IGP, right? Again, this is for if you want to do more than just get the title. And the problem is in that pursuit, sometimes you fly, as I like to say, a little too close to the sun and you get your wings burned off because you're looking for too much power or too much precision and you cause a confidence issue in the dog or you cause a lack of clarity in the dog or the dog goes a little bit too out of control in the trial setting so this is the challenge right now i'm getting good power on the track but i'm losing a little precision but i have to balance that because if i put too much pressure on this young dog I don't know if he'll want to track for me that day. So I have to be very careful. That's the, that's the challenge that we all face. And every dog's a little different. Good boy, Gage. Yeah. Yeah. The way I put pressure on him is different than I would put on some other dogs. I like to put pressure in a very kind of active way. And if it's active pressure, he stays active. And if it's more like you screwed up and then you're a bad boy kind of pressure for him, he becomes suppressed. So... I need to make sure my pressure is always functional and productive. And sometimes that's easier said than done. If anybody who's trained for this sport knows, this is much more complicated really than, you know, I've done a lot of other kinds of training. And for me, this is the most complicated form and also subsequently the most interesting form of dog training. I'm going to pause this video now so that I can, fo you know what, I'll let you guys watch this corner and then uh, we'll, uh, will go on so you can see you know there's there's some food in this track because i have to build the confidence if i push too hard then he might not want to oh, 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 oh good boy good boy good. so he went off a little bit there but he figured it out where's my flag i'm letting him actually free track right now because i'm looking for my damn flag i hate walking back through the field and finding the flag there it is I got that line. Easy, easy. Sook. Hey! Good job, man. Good job. Yes. Way good job, buddy. That was good. First time downing on a wood article. I've been using tiny pieces of fabric for the most part. All right, guys. I'm going to check back in with you later. Okay guys, so like I mentioned earlier, I'm, 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 on, I'm all done training today and uh, you know, soaked through, mud all over me, dogs exhausted from like the six, seven rounds of training he's had. But this is, this is the grind. This is the difference between going out there and you know, crossing your fingers and hoping it's a good day and being pretty sure it's going to be a good day. Now for me, a lot of my grind, instead of proofing things, a lot of my grind is actually being spent training things so i am behind the eight ball in that sense right you never really want to be training new behaviors 
bef um, a few days before the trial because that puts you at great risk. But, you know, like I said before, I kind of knew that that was going to happen and I still chose to do it. That being said, I've kind of been reflecting and I'm thinking that this is going to be my last uh, trial of the spring. I was kind of hoping to go and do a two at the regionals if my one went fine. But I think now just from how much work I've put on the dog and how much pressure I've put on the dog, it's time to take a break and go back and refine things. So my mindset going into this trial is power over precision. Because if I make too much precision, I'm going to lose power. And it's always easier, in my opinion, to make precision over power. And if you go precision, 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 then you're going back and kind of being like, no, no, be powerful here. And he's like, I don't know, you put a lot of pressure on me here. And that's always kind of in the back of the dog's head. Depends on the dog. In my opinion, Gage is a dog that, you know, he, he can get over that kind of stuff uh, with a reasonable degree of, of, of reliability. But for sure, you have to be careful, even with him, about stuff like that. So today was mostly about showing him exercises. My big concern, retrieve over the wall. The dog has shown me a couple of times on new jumps that he might not bring that dumbbell. He might leave the dumbbell there and then come back, or he might try to avoid the new jump. So it was important for me to get to that field, get my dog jumping over that jump. That's the other thing. I have a very inexperienced dog. He's two years old. He hasn't been on that many fields, right? And he certainly is only trialed now on one field. So it's really important now to show my dog all the exercises in a variety of places and in a variety of fields. And that's what this upcoming year is going to be. Now, I wanted to briefly address um, some comments about Vasco that, um, you know, crop, cropped up on my last video. Look, you know, people were saying, oh, you know, I'm so surprised that you would admit that, that you would, you know, show that the dog failed. Listen, this is IGP. This is, the, this is what separates the men from the boys and the, and the women from the girls, right? This is, this is the arena where a trainer can talk, but you better... You better show up and you better put, put, put you know, your money where your mouth is, so to speak. And sometimes even if you do, it's probably not going to work out for you. Now, I like to have, some people don't, some people say I'm cocky or whatever. I like to have an optimistic outlook going into anything that I do. If I'm like, oh no, I think I'm going to fail. Well, chances are higher that I'm going to fail. So I'm, yeah, no, we're going to go out there. We're going to kill it. We're going to be the best dog on the field. He's going to be a fire breather, right? That's my outlook. That's what I'm shooting for. That's what I want. Will that always happen? Maybe not. Maybe it will. We'll find out, right? But that's my outlook. So it's not about, you know, thinking I'm better than anybody else or anything like this. It's just about believing in our process and in our preparation, right? And and really kind of, I have something in my mind about how I want to train and so on and so forth. And, and you know, Carson, like I said, he trains with me. And we had that thought going in with Vasco. We said, you know, <coughs> we said, you know, look, <laughs> if, 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 if he outs... He's going to be, you know, for sure one of the best, if not the best dogs on the field. Um, and, you know, it didn't pan out, but that's part of it, right? And look, a lot of trainers just talk online and they never show anything. We show our work, not only with the pet dogs, but with the competition dogs. And we go and, and compete against other trainers. I don't think anything makes you better than competition, right? Because when you're competing... Now you, you, you don't just talk, you don't live in your little bubble and train in your little isolated spot. Now you see somebody else's training, you see somebody else's dog and you get humbled, right? You get humbled or you get that itch like, oh my God, <clears throat> you know, that guy is like, he's his dog and, and the training is looking way better than mine. I need to up my game, right? That's, that's the effect it should have on you. And that's why I think many trainers, they, they stick to their YouTube channel or their Instagram and their Facebook and they just talk on there and they never really go out there and put their money where their mouth is. And that's what I love about the sport is it's a great venue to do that. Is it the be all and end all? Absolutely not. But in my opinion, it's a fantastic, um, it's a fantastic opportunity for, for any professional trainer or just, you know, hobbyist to improve their, their skill and ability. Now, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about Vasco before I check out. Now, Vasco, like I said, people were surprised that we should, listen, I'm gonna fail, I shouldn't say that. I don't, I don't like to ever say that, but you know, chances are that at some point I'm gonna go up there on a trial field and I'm gonna get embarrassed. Things aren't gonna go the way I, I want them to go. That being said, Carson certainly didn't get embarrassed. The most honorable way to be disqualified in a trial is to no out, and with Vasco, it's no surprise that this happened. You know, like I said, I've been part of a number of reclamation projects with dogs, especially with, you know, kind of stronger dogs with a bit of a history. And, and 
it's no great surprise. This is what happens with these kinds of dogs, right? Um, but you, you learn from it and you move forward. Some people are saying, oh, just try playing with it. <laughs> Listen, guys, playing with the dog isn't gonna amp the obedience up. That's kind of the problem. He's been having it too easy, I think. Um, you know, he's been, he's been chilling, he's been relaxing. When he's a dog, I think, that likes to fight. He likes to be frustrated. The whole, listen, these dogs, he's not like a happy, let's play and just have fun kind of dog. He's a dog that's extremely possessive. Um, he wants what he wants and he likes to fight to get it and he likes to feel like he won the fight to get it. And I think what actually happened was there was too much playing and the dog just got super comfortable and yeah, I get my ball and you know, yeah, I let go of it, but I always get it back and I do some stuff and I get it before he had in his mind a real urgency, like a real urgency, like, oh shit, they took my ball, I might not get it back. And that was just, that wasn't because of any training that happened, that was actually because of um, the, uh, the mentality of the dog and I think with all the good training that we put on the dog and then, you know, getting him calmed down in the protection work over winter and all that type of stuff. I say calm down, the dog didn't out. But believe me, he was looking really good before the trial. Anyways, um, like I was saying, yeah, so I think the dog kind of calmed down. Like Carson was saying, the dog was like way better in the house than he normally was, whereas he used to be kind of an a-hole. And these are the things that tell, that tell you. So we have a plan and we're gonna be following that plan and we're gonna make Vasco fight again. And, and we're gonna see if that kind of brings the power that we had in his BH in December, 2022. And, uh, and like I already mentioned, we're gonna be going in and, and maybe doing some uh, health investigations as well to see if there's any kind of subtle health issue that might be uh, uh, taking some gas out of the, uh, the tank. But you know, I always say this, if the dog looks good in protection, then you probably didn't. Now, if Vasco didn't look good in protection, I'd be like, oh shit, something's wrong with him. But he was real strong in protection. Um, <clears throat> so that's what leads me to believe that there really is no physical issue. It's more of a mental issue there. So it's not an issue, by the way, some people are suggesting handlers. Listen, I know you guys probably haven't watched that video that we did on Vasco. Uh, I think I'll link it above where I talked about uh, where we show his BH and then we talk about the, the dog's history. Dog's been through three, four handlers already. Carson's, uh, he's either number four or number five. And he is the only one that has taken this dog to trial and that has had success with this dog and has gotten the, the place that he's got. So it's not definitely not a handling issue. Um, you know, uh, I know for a fact, you know, Carson is, is absolutely the best dog this handler could have. And he's proven it. He's proven it. You know, there was guys that, that, that trained that dog with a lot more experience than him. And they didn't have half, half the success that uh, Carson and Vasco has had there. And, you know, it's, uh, they've, been, they've, been, uh, they've been really putting in the reps with the training. And, um, you know, we had a plan with Vasco. It wasn't just, oh, you know, people, people always ask Carson, you know, like, oh, what is it? What, you know, what did you do? Like, like he did some kind of magic. Look, we had a training plan. There's a certain training system that I use for reclamation project dogs, whether they have a bad foundation in obedience, handler aggression, all that type of stuff. And it works. It's worked for me like two other times with, with, with pretty strong dogs. So I knew it would work for Vasco and it did. Now, obviously we haven't got the dog to a three yet, but we will. So let's suffice to say we have a plan. We're just sharing all the hiccups and bumps along the way because this is dog training. Believe me, you're gonna have hiccups and bumps. You're gonna have issues, right? You're gonna have stuff. Like there's no dog that just, it's smooth sailing. We're training from point A to point B and oh look, he's got his IGP-3 and there was no challenges along the way. There was no problems to figure out, especially with a dog with his kind of history. So anyways guys, that's 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 my little uh, spiel. Uh, it's a couple days now until my, a um, uh, few days now to the trial and um, you know, I've, I've got a lot of work to do. Got to make sure I have a send out. Got to make sure, um, you know, do the best I can to make sure my dog brings that dumbbell back over the wall. My dog probably will hit me with the dumbbell when he gets, you know, hit me in the front when he brings the dumbbell. I'm focusing, like I said, more on power in this trial. So I'm going to take power over precision in this trial. I just want my dog to be powerful and active and to, to, to show his quality and, and to show the good, good training that we did, I hope. And... Um, yeah, that's the plan. Like, subscribe, comment below. Um, you know, I do read the comments from time to time. And I uh, appreciate all the feedback, guys. Hope you enjoy.